Once the patient has been screened and can safely have an MRI scan, ask them to lie supine on the scanner bed with their head on a pillow. Provide an emergency buzzer and headphones to protect their ears. Carefully move the patient into the scanner and centre 4 inches or 10 centimetres above the iliac crest. Now move the patient fully into the bore of the magnet. Ensure that the patient is calm and comfortable before leaving the room. Once back in the control room, select the patient details in the browser or type them in manually. Accurately enter all patient data, including the patient weight, so that the specific absorption rate can be calculated correctly. Register the patient as lying head first and supine. Select the sequences according to hospital and radiologist protocols. In this protocol we have three sagittal sequences and two axial sequences. Begin the scan with a three-plane localizer. Now plan your first sagittal sequence. On the sagittal localizer, the field of view should cover the sacrum inferiorly and T12 superiorly. Bring the saturation band close to the vertebra to eliminate artifact from respiration and pulsation of the abdominal vessels. On the coronal view, centre to the midline of the vertebra, ensuring coverage of the transverse processes from side to side. On the axial view, again centre to the midline and angle the slices parallel to the spinous process. Check that the coils are turned on and apply. The planning for the subsequent sagittal sequences can be copied from the first sagittal sequence. Once a sagittal image has been acquired, you can plan your axial sequences. Scroll through the sagittal images to find the central slice. Move the saturation band in front of the vertebra once again to limit artifacts from respiration and vascular pulsation. Angle the slice blocks parallel to each intervertebral disc to acquire true axials. It's important to avoid excessive overlap by adjusting the block angulation. Overlap between the blocks can result in crosstalk artifact, which may overlie areas of interest on the resulting images. Cover the last four intervertebral discs and any others that appear abnormal or prolapsed. You should also cover any other pathology that's seen in the vertebra or spinal canal by adding slices. Scroll through the image to ensure slices are sufficient to cover each intervertebral disc from top to bottom. A group of five slices is usually sufficient. An appropriate angle should be applied in the coronal plane so that the slices pass through the intervertebral joint spaces on the coronal localizer. This can be done by using the perpendicular option in the software of some scanners, otherwise adjust manually. The planning for the next axial acquisition can be copied from the previous axial sequence.
you should review your images as the scan proceeds. This is a T2 sagittal image where fluids and fat appear bright. Here you can clearly see the cerebrospinal fluid surrounding the spinal cord and conus. This is a T1 sagittal image where fluids appear dark and fat appears bright. This is a stir or short tau inversion recovery sequence. Here fluids appear bright and fat appears dark. Stir images are very useful for the diagnosis of infections, fractures and bony metastases. This is a multi-slice, multi-angle T2 egg seal image. Within the bright cerebrospinal fluid, the descending spinal nerves can be clearly seen, as can any impingement of the spinal canal from prolapsed intervertebral discs. And this is a multi-slice, multi-angle T1 image, where the CSF appears dark and the spinal nerves appear grey.